Blessings to your friend. This is Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to minister into your life each and every time we get this opportunity. I want you to share this, to call somebody, text somebody, let somebody know that this broadcast is on the air. You know, friend, we do not take for granted every opportunity we have to minister into your life. We know something will be said, something will be seen that will truly inspire you to continue to live for God. Stay tuned in. God has great things to get ready to minister into your heart. Righteousness exalted a nation. If you want to see this nation go back to a higher place, if you want to see this nation get to a higher place, start living righteously. If righteousness will move a nation, then how much more will righteousness move your own household? Because there's a lot of people crying out for the nation who won't even cry for their own. Quiet in those little rock this morning. There's a lot of people crying out for the nation and crying out for everybody, but they won't even cry for their own selves. And we all know this, before I can help somebody else, I got to first help myself. When you come to church, you're not coming to be so discerning and so uh, critical of others. There's some of you here, and I'm not trying to sound overly bearing here, but you so... You're so curious about everything and everybody else, and you're so watchful. But if you're not careful, you miss the whole purpose of church, which is to talk about you to you. Amen. Yes, church is designed to help you. And God can't help you if you don't receive the help that's for you. So he says, righteousness exalts a nation. Who in here wants to stay down? Who in here wants to stay low? I don't know nobody who would say, Pastor, I really want to stay depressed. Sometimes it's more simple than we make it. Righteousness exalts a nation. Are you practicing righteousness? And actually, that's something that you ought to say within yourself as you hear today. Am I practicing righteous living? Or am I practicing sinful living? So I'm going to read it one more time. Righteousness exalted a nation. Are you still here? Well, somebody help the preacher this morning. But what? Sin is a what? Now, again, a reproach is what? Disgrace. Can I teach? It's a disgrace, but also sin is a shame. I don't know about you, but anytime I've been caught doing something wrong, I was shameful about it. Y'all seen sometimes these talk shows where they have people come on there, and by the time you think you got the dirt out, here comes some more dirt out, and look how much shame is there. Anytime you're caught in something you shouldn't be in, it's going to bring forth shame. It's going to bring forth some type of guilty conscience there. And a lot of people are walking around trying to be free while they're living in sin and in shame. Now, I want to go and I want to go to the book of Isaiah, the 59th chapter. And we're going to go to quite a few verses, but I'm going to keep moving along pretty fast here this morning. Isaiah 59. And this is no disrespect to other ministries and churches, but you need more than just a hum and hack. We need understanding of our lives so we can know how to live for God. Isaiah 59. Now notice, righteousness exalts the nation says a reproach to any people. Anybody who does it, it's a reproach. It's a disgrace to them. Verse number 1 says in Isaiah 59, well, you have it, just say amen. Verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot do what? Say. Neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. Now that's self-explanatory. It's saying God is able to reach you wherever you are. Oh, man, that's a word for somebody in here. Because there's somebody in here who feel like you're unreachable. But you need to understand what it says here. God will reach you wherever you are in your life. Whatever situation, whatever moment, whatever failure you may be in, sickness, disease, look to somebody and say, God will reach you. One of the things the church needs to get back to is reaching people right there where they are. That's why I have a problem with slowful saints. You better say something. Somebody think I'm talking about you. People who don't witness. I mean, y'all look at me like I got four legs in the table. I said what I said. People who don't never advertise for God. People who never take the opportunity and take the time to really ever consider the souls and the hearts of other people. Do you not know when you consider the souls and the hearts of the people, you're willing to share the gospel with them? Right. Some of us talk more about a movie than we do about the things of God. You know when something brings enjoyment to you, when something brings excitement to you, you tell somebody, man, you go down there, man, the kids eat for free on Tuesday nights. 
Man, we went, we paid me and my wife, and, and, they, and they got everything. They were full. I mean, they got meat. They got good desserts, too. They even got pizza. <laughs> but we never talk about the things of God. It's almost like we had this secret service Jesus. When the Bible said, let your light shine. And he also said, men don't light a candle and hide underneath the bushel. What he was saying is, you don't just get lit up by God so you can go back into hiding. Now, for some of us, you can be as same as you can be, but the only person knows is you and God because you never tell the world that there's a Savior that will reach them where they are. Yes. And my purpose of preaching is never to bash nor to put you down, but we have to get out of our comfort zone and remember, just like you was a soul dying and going to hell, if you are saved by God, God is trying to encourage you now that he will pull you out of whatever you're in yes. so that he can save you to go help save somebody else. Amen. God didn't save me for me to sit at home and say, I know I'm called to preach. He saved me to get up and preach. That's why the enemy knows he can't stop us from preaching. Some of us don't even know the devil will send distractions even in church services sometimes yes. to try to steal you away from the word of God. But before he sent a distraction to you, he sent distractions in my life to try to keep me from coming to even give you a word. Yes. But if I can overcome distractions, you can overcome distractions. Yes. If I can fulfill the calling, you can fulfill the calling. Amen? Yes. Let's have a Sherman Clump moment. Tell somebody, yes, you can. Yes, so he's saying the Lord's hand is not shortened. When has God's hand changed? Amen. When has God's hand been different? When has God's hand been unreachable to you wherever you are? Amen. We have to understand the importance of what the Spirit of God is saying to us even today. Wherever you at mentally, so wherever you at in your heart, there's some of us who just come to church and you leave the same way. And it's because you don't have no reaching out in your spirit. It's because you feel like God can't reach you, and God is studying saying, take me by the hand. My hand is here. Yes. But because you've been so disappointed by men and women, and you've been so disappointed by work, and so disappointed by your so-called friends, you take it out on me. You told yourself so much you can't trust nobody that now you're a living witness that you can't even trust God. But his hand is not short. That he cannot save. That word save in the black church or in the wholeness church, we think that just means I'm living with God. But save means delivered. Yes. To be free from. And churches are full of people, but sometimes the people are not full of deliverance. They're not full of freedom. There's many of you here today, and some of you waiting on me to prophesy. Don't just come to church for prophecy. Come to church for God. Yes. Whether he prophesied or whether he just teach and preach. But I don't care if I give you a million prophecies. If you just let God come into your life the way he wants to come in, when God comes in, the attributes of God comes in there, then freedom comes in there. Then not the Bible say where the spirit of the Lord is. That's where there's liberty. You are too good of a man or a woman to be walking around bound. Acting free and being free is two different things. There's a whole lot of knockoff purses out there. I'm going to say amen, somebody think you're carrying one. It's all right. I saw some of y'all faking it till you make it. Some of y'all like, it's all good, Pastor. There's a lot of knockoff persons out there. Everything ain't Gucci. Uh -oh. Can I buy amen? Y'all looking funny. But sometimes, brother, you fool everybody else that it's real Gucci or not. You know whether it's real most times. You know whether the real value is anything. And we have perfected, I may not be talking about you directly, so don't throw none out there. But we as a church have perfected faking things out. And I've been bothered because we don't have to be fakes. We can be real. I tell people this even about prophecy. If God don't give me a word for you, I ain't making one up. Because if I give you a word, I have to make it come to pass. But if God give you something, then he's the one that's going to perfect that thing that he spoke out there. God is raising up real people, and many of you all, God is trying to encourage you to be one of those real ones. So he said, my hand ain't short. I can't save you. I can't free you. You name one issue God can't free you from. You go into your home, God can fix it. You go into your body, God can fix it. You go into depression, God can turn it around. You're dealing with financial problems, God can fix it. 
The reason why he hasn't done what we know he can do is not because he changed, but oftentimes because we don't put our faith in him. Because we don't put our trust in him. Oh, Brother Steve, I don't know if I get that. Well, let me help you out. Jesus himself said, the Bible said that Jesus himself said that he could not work many miracles in his own country because of their lack of faith. They looked at him the wrong way. They didn't perceive him the way he wanted to be perceived. See, now some of you here today, for you that's listening, you may be perceiving the word to be offending you right now. But somebody beside you receiving the word and it's building their faith up and they're saying, they said, God, forgive me for doubting you. God, forgive me for not trusting you. See, your perception is reality. Are you listening to me? So he says, his hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Can I read a little more here? Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Now, I used to hear it all the time and say, God, you got a heavy ear? But I thought about it. It's saying his ears is not weighed down. See, sometimes we get weighed down in our ears. See, if everybody in church tell me all your problems, we get finished telling them, oh, you just gave me a weight in my ear. I'm weighed down from hearing all your problems. Because when you finish telling me, I can't fix them all. Don't look at me like that. I ain't God. I'm just a man. But God said, you can talk to me about it all day long. I'm never tired of hearing you talk to me. And it's quiet in here. I'm never tired of you going to me with your issues. Now, before you judge somebody else in here, look to yourself. When the last time you took that issue to God? Look your neighbor and say, Pastor, talking to you. We take the issues to the beauty shop. Cheryl didn't tell you what to do. Cheryl, Carol, all of them didn't tell you what to do. You ain't tell me nothing before get to talking. And get quiet with that. When some of y'all ladies get to talking, <laughs> y'all ain't got to say nothing. Hmm. Hmm. That's like y'all back in the old slave days or something singing him. Hmm. <laughs> and when they finish, whether they right or wrong, they still can't deliver you from it. It's not that God is not saying you can't seek counsel, but the greatest counselor is God. How many of y'all be honest? Even sometimes people you love, they talk to you about the same problem so much, as so long your ears get heavy, you get tired of hearing it, don't you? Yeah, what, what honest people at? Let me try this side. <laughs> sometimes it's not that you don't cope with them, it's not that you don't have sympathy, but it's like, my God, enough is enough. And sometimes when they call you debating, do I answer? Do I not answer? And sometimes right before you answer, he's like, man, I hope they don't hold me all more. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But even though we as human beings are like that, don't mean God is. Amen. As I discern in the audience, there's many of you all dealing with all types of things in here. There's things you've been going through, things you've been suffering. Man, I was going to some one time, and I, and I just told you about the beauty but I walked to the barbershop one time, and I mean, every man in there started releasing their problem. Then they got to me. I just said, I ain't talking to y'all. <laughs> I did. God take my life on that. Because I realized, if they didn't open to talk about their issues with me, you think I'm about to share some secretive issues with them? Yeah. You know how we is. You wonder why your business in the streets. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking to some of our business down Roosevelt Road, <laughs> Martin Luther King Drive. <laughs> that business everywhere out there. Because we're talking to people and you're trying to get them to bring you relief. And oftentimes they can't bring relief. His ear is not heavy that he cannot hear. Encourage your neighbor here and tell him God sees. Come on, look at them and say, God hears you. God hears you. There's things in your heart that's never came out of your mouth that God hears. There's things in your mind that have never came out of your mouth that God hears. And some of us are just mentally dead and you're spiritually dead and in your heart you feel like a dead man or woman because you want so bad other humans to hear and to understand. You want so bad just to get you, to know who you really are, to stop judging you based off your past and just know I really am a good person. Sometimes people know you're a good person. They just got an evil heart. 
It's tough. I see what I see. But God judges you from the inward parts. Things that man never came out of your mouth. God said, I still hear it. Yes. You ain't as bad as they said you is. Your reputation ain't no threat to me. I know the real you. But don't stop speaking to God because other people have misjudged your past. Now let's move on here. Because again, we're talking about the reproach of sin. He said, my hand ain't short that I can't say. My ear ain't heavy that I can't hear. But look, at here's the issue. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. What he's saying is, the reason why you feel like now I'm a problem is because of your own mess. Don't you see people create a problem and act like, I, I don't know what the problem is. You told a lie again. You knew the problem was you because you did something crazy. Don't sit here and we supposed to be roommates. You don't pay the rent. Then talking about you don't know what happened. You know what happened. You didn't pay me the rent. <laughs> Wake up, smile on my face. How you want to? Give me rent. Y'all try to act spiritual. <laughs> and sometimes we do it in every area of our life. Come home. Don't talk about what we're going to eat for dinner. Everybody just guessing. <laughs> well, I thought maybe we went out. Wait, well, can you say something? <laughs> now you're arguing. Then when you finish arguing, you're still hungry. You know, boy, my gosh, when you some deep saints, now you're praying about it. God, get a hold of their mind. I bet you God be up there laughing at some of this crazy stuff. <laughs> Even the baby give me some songs. Amen. He tells us your iniquities. You don't take bill money to buy you shoes. Then come home and think we holding hands. Can I come down here? Come With Jake next week. And then what? Oh, oh, you know how we talk. I ain't doing nothing to you. <laughs> While we're acting funny with me, they said, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sin and iniquities and things that are wrong to do create wrong results. People who should be happy, now we're unhappy. People who should have joy, now we don't have joy. Places who should be full of peace, now those places have no peace. All because iniquity and sin set in. If iniquity and sin will separate you from God, you better hear me very well. It'll separate us one from another. Yes. There are people who are separated who should not be separated. Both of them are good people, but all because of bad choices. I wish somebody let me preach this morning. Oh man, can we get can we can we be like young folks? Can we get real? I'm seeing it in the ministry, Pastor. I feel like it's something between me and you. I ain't nothing between me and you. What I got against you? It's just you know we thought well like you most spiritual in the past. It's just something there. It's something there. Ain't none there but space and opportunity. It's something, it's something. Something. You don't never follow an instruction and come look upside my head, the word find you. Now it's something there. I was preaching faithful just because you decided not to be on me. I'm going to change from preaching it. I was preaching, oh Lord, whether you and Sister Cheryl got into a fight or not. Can I buy amen? Amen. I was preaching upon giving whether you rob God the rest of your life. Don't act like it's something. You know what that something is? Amen. That something is sin. Yes, come on. Amen? Amen. Amen. And anything that separates us is not of God. Right. We are many member body. The you, the you all in here who feel like you're the least of all, whether you think you are the least or not, you are needed in the body of Christ. Yes. Although I joke and play around at times, don't never look at me as if I'm needed and you ain't needed. Right. You are just as vital to the, to the God I serve as me and anybody else. Amen. Don't let things in your life that causes separation from God. When you separate from God, you separate from the ultimate being that can do anything but fail. When you separate from God, you separate from the ultimate being that can provide for you in ways you can't provide for yourself. 
I was talking to one of our children one time, and I said, don't get mad at me and mama for a decision you made. And you know how we are. Some of us been that way before. I'm running away. Where are you going? <laughs> when you get there, you think that neighbor will let you stay there forever? From what I see, some of them neighbors have a hard time feeding their three kids. Are you buying, you know, extra milk and cookies? Amen? When I leave God, where am I going anyways? Oh, man. Am I not deep enough for y'all? You know, I, I got mad one time, too. said I was leaving the house. I got the house, walked down the road, didn't know where to go. We had a gas station called Kermagee. I stayed in there. Didn't have no money to buy nothing. <laughs> here, I'm gonna do, here I am going to use faith to do something ignorant. You ever use faith to do something stupid? I just keep reading. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Now, notice what he said here. And your sins have did what? Now, we often hear this. Most people want the hand of God. They don't want the face of God. His hand always gives. His face is where the vision is at. His face is where his mouth is at so he can speak into your life. His face is what carries the things that we need in the church, the voice of God and the eyes of God. And if most of us would listen to the voice of God and see life through the eyes of God, I know things would be different in this world. Yes, man. It's impossible to look at other men in here the way God looks at them and you talk about these men. It's impossible to look at other women in here the way God look at them and you always run them down thinking you're better than them. When you see people the way God see them, you look beyond their falters and their failures. Oh. Amen. How many of y'all be honest? Sometimes you know God's words would be different than your words. Right. Even concerning yourself, talking about how you just are sorry nothing. God didn't say it about you. Amen. That's why we need his face. Talking about your children. My children ain't going to never amount to nothing. God didn't say it about your kids. No. I'm broke. Man, my, my wife had to rebuke me one time. Don't say you're broke. I said, well, honey, I want to grip my teeth until you leave me alone, but I think you're right. <laughs> Your words carry power. Amen. God never called you broke. I don't care if you can't even pay no bill at all. Amen. Don't speak things that God didn't speak over your life. But oftentimes we don't know what to say. We don't know what we sing because God didn't hit his face. All because there's a division because of sin. Sin divides you. That's what makes it a reproach. It's a disgrace to God for me to say I'm a child of God and I don't feel close to my father. Does that make sense? Am I moving too fast? Can I preach a few more minutes? I won't be that long today. Your niggas have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you. Watch this. That he will not what? Hear you. It's a dangerous thing for me to say I'm praying and God ain't even listening to me. What did, what, did, what did David the psalmist say? David the psalmist said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me when I pray. I oftentimes see people trying to pray on top of sin. I oftentimes see people trying to pray on top of wrongdoing. Trying to pray on top of hating one another and filthiness and wickedness. But God will never hear those things when our heart is not set aright. Are you listening to me? I want to go to the book of, oh, let's go to the book of um, James 4. Now, you hear me say sin will separate you, and you hear me say sin is a reproach. Let's see what the Bible calls sin. James 4, verse 17. Is anybody getting anything? Like you almost been a victim. It's almost like Job. You feel like you. It's like the thing you feared is what you fell into. It's like things you said you don't need to do. It's like your life. You felt like your life was just doomed. There's no other way. You have to go those things. But those things have been turned around in your heart and in your mind. God loves you. I don't have to try to 
be over the dramatic I ain't got to tell you you're called. You know you're chosen and called. And that's why, that's really why God has spared your life so many times. And you haven't even wanted to be around too sometimes. But God wouldn't let it be so. Because there's something good God want to bring out of your life. And God's not done with you. It's not over with. The enemy's trying to make you feel like it's at the end of the road, like things been messed up so bad, there's nothing else to do. And there's been other people around you sometimes trying to encourage you. And it's not that you haven't listened, but they don't know how deep things they got in your heart. It's like, I hear what you're saying, but I just don't see that. I don't believe that. But God said, believe it, because that's what he says. God's not through with you, brother. The devil tried to mark you a long time ago and tried to make it seem like your life was worthless and pointless. But God's turning around for the good. You are a good man. You made some mistakes like everybody else in here, but you are a very good man. A very good man. And the devil wanted to destroy you, but God won't let it be so. If you would take even some of the words you heard today about walking and pleasing God, God going to turn things quickly for you too. And it ain't just like, it ain't just mental and spiritual thing. I see what God's going to bless you financially, so too. It's almost like the system trying to put a hold on you where you can't get ahead. But God's going to cause you to create your own system. I see where you're going to create like a little small business or something. And you're going to do like some outside work here and there doing different things. And God's going to bless it. And God's going to cause you to prosper. Now, I haven't talked to mama. I haven't talked to sister about you. They ain't told me nothing. But God told me to let you know that he gave that message for you today. Even as I was testifying, the testimony was blessing your heart. Because you know what it feels like to go to other things and deal with other things and have other things as a substitute. But God said the substitute just ain't the real thing. And if you would set yourself to please God, God said he going to please Herbert. Because God got something great he want to finish in your life. Friend, I'm so thankful that you got a chance to hear the word of the Lord, to see the signs and wonders of God during this telecast. We prayerfully hope that this was not the last time that you stay connected with our ministry. Just like you was blessed during this broadcast, we truly believe that you will continually be blessed if you will continue to watch us each and every week on this same station at this same time. You know, friend, if you look on the screen, there's a number you can call we want to pray with you for any prayer requests you may have. Anything you believe in God for, we want to connect our faith with you. And more importantly, if there's a lack of salvation in your life, if you feel far from God, we want you to understand that the purpose of our ministry is to build your faith and to have you walking closer with God. Feel free to go to the phone right now. You can go to our website as well. You can connect with us through social media. Don't let this be a one-time event. Stay connected with us as this is a God-given connection. And as we go off the air, we want to remind you of the love of God and the hope of Christ. Blessings to you on behalf of Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries.